My name is Mike Prom with Applied Engineering. I'm going to look at some of my new dynamic simulation functionality. So, the first thing to notice is that this was created with the gear generator of the advanced, advanced components. Um, these two gears are connected along with my, my pulleys and these belts. So, this information was created when I actually created these gears. I can now utilize this information in my dynamic simulation. So I'm going to go over to my dynamic simulation now. And you can see that when I go to rotate these pulleys and these wheels and the gears, they're all still connected. So this is information that I created um, when I first made the gears and it's all brought over now into my um, dynamic simulation. I didn't have to do anything here, it just automatically recognized that. And I put an accelerator on one of these wheels and I'm just going to play this motion. Again, this just lets me make one change or one, uh, one area of the inventor and brings it over to the others. So something else that's new is that I played this animation and now I've decided I wanted to add some more traces. I'm going to want to look at my velocity at this point. you can see how it's added. So even though it's looking at the, the simulation, I don't have to rerun it. Um, previously, you know, if I wanted to add some more traces or make any changes to my traces, I'd have to rerun my simulation. Now, the simulation I did on this drivetrain here is fairly simple, so it does not take a lot of time, but you can imagine if I had a large assembly open um, with some different cylinders going in and out and different gears and pulleys to rerun that might take a significant amount of time. So this allows me to make changes, uh, look at my traces, some of my forces, without actually rerunning my assembly. Something else that's new is in my mobile groups, it breaks it down and can see which different components are separated out and adds a color to them. So I can just get an idea of what functionality or what these two different, or these uh, different components are and how they're acting on each other. Something else that should be noted here is I have the capability to export this to FBA. This is new um, to the output grapher. It was previously a tool in my dynamic simulation panel here, but now it's added to my output grapher. So this motion I just created with these forces, I can mark forces and export them right to my FEA. But I'm also able to create a studio animation utilizing this. So I'm going to turn off my color and send this over to my studio animation. So now I'm in Inventor Studio. You can see underneath my application options. And I just want to have some motion applied to this. You can see I have a, a timeline. Um, I don't have any motion right now, so I'm just going to come in and add some motion. So I'm able to come in with uh, an action, um, maybe just start and end time. And 
just drag this back. Play this. I didn't add any motion. I can go back and add some motion to that as well. And I can utilize this information and actually create some renderings from this. So before I get into my renderings, I just want to take a look at my, my cameras. I can see I have three different cameras uh, created. And something that's new is um, I have capability of enabling this depth of field. You can see by the boxes that are in the center of the screen. Um, what this allows me to do is gives me some camera tools where what's in the box is going to be sharp and then things that are faded or outside of the box are become faded. Um, just some tools that are utilized in the camera or picture industry to allow your focus or your eye to be drawn to certain components in the assembly. So once I have that done, I'm just going to render this image. Select which camera I want to use. And render this. Now this is just going to take a minute or so. So it just grabs your attention and focuses it to the CRISPR um, drive wheels. And again, this is just a tool that adds to the quality of the renderings that can, can be created with Inventor. And, um, you know, more and more, all these renderings are being utilized by the marketing department and also, you know, upper management to see what products are actually going to look like. Something else I want to mention about this Inventor Studio is that we have some different um, options in our lighting capabilities. So, something that's very new is this. Um, shadow option so we can have no shadows sharp shadows but what's added is soft shadow soft shadow is just blurs out the lines of the shadows makes them look a little more realistic we can also change the lighting parameters of this to allow us to change the, ash, the soft shadows and um, just make our renderings look more and more like their actual picture so I'm not going to render that again just because of the time wise but you can see that the two different uh, additions are the soft shadows to create softer um, shading lines and also in our actual cameras with uh, depth of field. 